Welcome to a very special holiday edition of Adventures with Mare and Suze. <laughs> Susan Waldman, so good to see you, my friend. Oh, well, it's a little far away, but hi, Mare. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> I've got my Not one sparkly thing on. That's all I've got, my one sparkly thing. And I knew you wear sparkles, so I wear sparkles too. It looks wonderful. Thank you. You look great as well. Now, I'm, I'm thinking back to last year, and we had so much fun in the city over Christmas, and I'm bummed we can't go walk around New York City and take pictures with all the Christmas trees this year. They probably thought, look at these stupid tourists. But um, that was ter uh, terrific. Just part of Christmas in New York is a really special uh, time, and it, it's very sad that we can't do it. But we'll be back next year. By the way, I want to rappel down the building with Brian Cashman. If you're in, I am 100% in. Now, do you want to be an elf? What character would you be? Oh, gosh. Maybe I should be Mrs. Santa Claus. I think that would be wonderful. I mean, that would be great. I figured you'd say no, because when we went to Costa Rica, I wouldn't go zip lining. And my answer to you was going to be, I'd rather go down a building in Stanford, Connecticut, than go zip lining in Costa Rica. So I think we should put that out there for next year. You know what? I'm going to clip this off, send it to Patrick, <laughs> and I think we're going to be locked in immediately. Immediately. Oh, I saw Cash on the hot stove with you, and he and I saw the whole show that he did, and he said he couldn't get anybody to do it, and he asked a lot of people, and I bet he asked those guys in baseball ops, and they wouldn't do it, but we'll do it. Why not us? I think we are the right call. I think we are. Now, what are you going to be? If I'm Mrs. Santa Claus, what are you going to be? I guess I'll be an oversized elf. I'll be like the one <laughs> movie, Will Ferrell, who looks like a giant compared to everyone else. Okay, whatever, well, whatever you want to do. Uh, now, you know, 2020 was not the best year for yeah. everyone for a lot of reasons, as we know. But you know what? We still were able to have a little bit of fun. There were some big moments in 2020. And one that I will never forget is you singing the national anthem so beautifully at Yankee Stadium. Just tell everyone again how that came about. And I remember the players just tipping their caps to you. It was such a cool moment, Susan. Well, you know, it, it was amazing because people probably don't know, before I was in this business, when I was in theater, that's how I used to go to ball games for free. And this was in the 70s and nobody realized it was a way to get on television. I would just call up wherever I was and usually I was doing a production of La Mancha somewhere and I'd say, hi, this is Susan Weldman and I'm starring in Man of La Mancha, do you need an anthem singer? And they'd go, I guess, nobody ever <laughs> did it. So I just went and sang the national anthem so that I could go to a ball game for nothing. And I did it, oh God, a thousand times. And then I and you did it for the Knicks many, many times. I was 49 and two. My two losses were Michael Jordan games. So I, I think I'm undefeated. And, <laughs> and I just never, never did it since they've been in the new stadium. And that's a long time ago now. And mm -hmm. Garrett Cole, when he was in Houston, um, we were talking and I just think he's the great he knows everything about people, don't he's not just a regular, you know, guy, another media. He knew who I was and knew all of it. And I said to him at one point a couple of years ago, you know, whenever it happens, you're gonna make a great Yankee. And he said, Well, if I come here, you have to sing the national anthem. And I said, Yeah, sure. On opening day, yeah, sure, great. And when he got here, uh, he was coming over to the table where Sweeney Murdy and I were interviewing him. And as he came over to the table at the press conference, he said, Don't forget your promise. And I said, Yeah, sure. Now, usually, you know what happens on opening day. They have the military and flyovers. Well, we got to opening day, and the only one who was allowed in the ballpark was me. So, so that could sing. So I was in my booth and I got all dressed up and about five minutes before I was going to sing this, I realized I hadn't done this in at least 16 years live. And I'm thinking, boy, it doesn't matter. So if I mess up at an empty Yankee stadium, I had no idea that there were like millions of people watching and it was on YouTube and TikTok or wherever they put things now. Um, yeah, that was great. That was, um, that was so great. It took me back and it was uh, something that I love to do. And it, and it was great. And so that's what I did. That was, that was the highlight of my season, that's for sure. <laughs> and everybody enjoyed it. And one of the coolest things too is you wound up making a, a rendition of it 
and putting it on iTunes, raising money for local charities in the Bronx. Can people still buy it? And are you still donating? Yeah, no, any, anything. Um, you take your 99 cents and I've um, donated at least $1,000 so far. And that's 1,000 people. And we can still do that. And it's City Meals. Um, dot org slash Bronx is where it goes to because you and I, Meredith, spent a lot of time in the Bronx and it's a very different um, part of New York City when there's no ball game and there's no fans and we saw a lot and these people are hurting and uh, for elderly people whose kids can't come and bring them food and can't talk to them and I just thought it was a great a great place and it's going right to the Bronx because citymills.org does a great thing but this one's going every penny is going to the Bronx to get food and a thousand dollars I was told will bring um, a weekend of food for two for a solid year so that's just put that in in perspective so if we can get another few thousand that's a whole year's food for people and it's yeah it's, it's all we can do i mean there are lots of ways to help i know but this one really tugged at my heartstrings walking around there and i know it did for you too no doubt about it. You're doing wonderful, wonderful work. Were there any other highlights for you, Susan? I think it was when, well, there were a couple of things. When we took um, pictures with Yogi Berra with the Yogi Berra Museum masks on, I kind of liked that, but it was a really strange time. So you tried to take, um, I think we tr you tried to take some fun where you got. Also, I forgot, you brought me avocado toast and I've never had <laughs> avocado toast. And it was wonderful. I had to make sure you stayed nourished for the game. <laughs> also, I know we love to travel so much. It's so much a part of who we are and what we do. And I was so bummed that we weren't going to any opposing stadiums. I thought I'd take it upon myself to make sure we got there one way or another. So I did. got the cardboard cutouts, Susan, so they'd be there when we were in Tampa Bay. Unfortunately, there was a delay with printing, so we made it yeah. the next weekend. Wouldn't that have been amazing if the guys had come out and there's Susan and Meredith sitting in back of the Yankees dugout? It would have been hysterical. I know Phil Nevin was was rooting for that to happen. He was he was wanted to, to be part of that when we were that. So uh, that was too bad. I thought we wanted to get them to San Diego so that they would see friendly faces when they went out and played in the playoffs, but it never happened. But we thought of you guys. We really did. We certainly did. Now. Uh, holidays right around the corner. Anything special planned? <laughs> yeah, I might take uh, Margot, my German Shepherd, who's lying down over here. We might go on an extra long walk. <laughs> but, an extra long walk? Well, you know, I, uh, I can't help but think about our friend, who we both haven't seen in quite some time. And I thought maybe you knew what he was doing for Christmas. <laughs> Did he <you> see it? <laughs> Well, John, um, I'm sure that at some point, John will um, be seeing his kids. All four kids are home, and I'm sure they will. he will be there with his mask and his gloves and, and giving, and giving um, Christmas presents to his kids, and I'm sure that that's what he'll be doing. Well, Susan, I want to wish you and everybody that is watching this a very happy holidays. I can't wait to see you in person in the new year. One of these days. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas, everybody, and happy, happy and safe New Year's.